Welcome back to Birds of a Feather. This is your girl, AJ, the Suburban Princess here. Welcome back to Birds of a Feather, the COVID edition. And there wouldn't be a COVID edition without Eddie B. How you doing? Yo, <laughs> what's going on, AJ? I'm good. I am good. We, we Thank you. It's, um, right now. it's a Philly t-shirt, which is cool. But it's Eagles green. So. <laughs> Phillies, I like it. It's so funny because I just saw a t-shirt on a website. Uh, you know how we always tease uh, switching to the Eagles real quick just for this tidbit, but for the Eagles, how Coach Ariano was made fun of because he wore those t-shirts for every player during every practice and people said he was. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So someone had on Twitter a t-shirt that said, this is my Sirianni Pander t-shirt. <laughs> and Kelly Green. And I said, I actually think I might want that to wear for September. because You know, it's coming because this is. We'll talk about the Eagles in a little bit because I think his role is basically going to be cheerleader for the rest of the season. Let's just keep it honest. But, you know, whatever. But uh, what you looking at? What you looking at? So there's something flashed up on my screen here. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is, is Eddie B having technical difficulties on the new season no, of Birds of a Feather? <laughs> nah, we're good. We're good to go. <laughs> all right. Now, um, all right. So welcome, everybody. As, as you can see, Eddie and I are... are in Philly mode right now. It's very. Oh, first of all, we're going to acknowledge the fact that AJ has now gone shaved. I'm trying to be like Eddie. <laughs> it's the. It's the. I don't know if I'm getting older and I'm just getting tired of even worrying about my hair. I just figured it's easy to do the big chop. So, AJ has now decided. Eddie B has got a good idea there. <laughs> and mind you, it's not like Eddie's always had his hair to his back or anything like that, but it's just like, it just seemed like a cool idea, especially because now with this unpredictable, humid ass weather we're having. Oh, right God. Now, <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. So <laughs> this just made sense. My friend, so like, just, my friend just Ava, it, she hooked me like, up. Just let it go, right? <laughs> let it go. I mean, I'm in this weird, funky unemployment season. So I figured it'd make everything easier for me, hopefully, ending ending soon because i had a successful interview today so anyway so back to the sports we're talking about phillies because phillies are now london bound they're in they have landed the phillies have landed if you've seen all the pr all their social media the mm-hmm. phillies are now in london town for the weekend for the series against the mets we're expecting a sweep how do you feel about it <laughs> I, I i expect that too with uh I think Ranger's good to go for the first game too. Which is, yes. Let, let's talk about the fact that Ranger probably was probably was fine the day after he had a uh a pit his contusion, and yeah. Didn't take his hand off practically, but he was okay. Um, he, yeah. really, he managed to get up and throw that that out. He still so he, like calmly was like, eh. Nah. Hey, and the only time you saw him <laughs> grimace was when he walked away on the mound. He's like, ah, damn it, that hurt. But yeah. you know. If we're going to talk about pain, though, outside of him, who has been getting more beat up more than our catcher, the best catcher in baseball? All the catchers get, you know, Stubbs got, got slid into the other day. Like, they had, Stubby had, a, had a collision at the base, but not like, as dramatic. That's, but. A, that's, a one, that's a one position that gets beat up a lot. You're taking a yeah. ball to – either you're taking a ball to the nuts or you get hit in the face with something, like – and there's nobody who brings that kind of visual, more color analyst wise than John Crucky, who tries to find a way to not curse or not say balls as much as he can. Oh, to he has to say pain. ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does have to say ball, but just not in that context. <laughs> he almost cursed himself the, actually the other day because when he, uh, who was who was it that hit that ball hard? I think it was Bohm. And he mm. said, he almost cursed. He said, I almost said a bad word, Tom. <laughs> Oh, I, I like Crux though. <laughs> Crux been on a tear. They had an interview with an actor on during a segment, and I don't know if anybody was, if you were peeping at that moment that they were talking during the um, the last Giants game from this series. Oh, Brewers. I'm sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to Reese Hoskins too because he got his standing ovation and he got at least a home run out of coming back yeah. home. So I love how Andy got tagged out. Trying, and he uh, got tagged out right away and quickly. There was an exchange between him and JT, like you mother effer, but it's all right. Yeah, he stared him down after he stole the base and he was like laughing at him. He just and he knew JT it. laughing like because <laughs> we all know Reese, you're not fast. And so you know that JT's like, Oh, you're gonna make me have to embarrass you. Here we go. And he laughed and grinned at him as soon as he got out. Hell, he like, you just had to do it. <laughs> hell, hell of a hell of a throw by Rojas to get very good throw Rojas to get Reese uh Perfect. to get Reese at home plate. I was like, wow. Yeah, for him to get uh JT to even get that just in time. And then shout out to Stubby because 
who was it? Bohm? Bohm threw the stubby the other uh, last night to get um, oh to get the, the, uh, the brewer guy it, out. It was so a that loaded, was base, loaded bases. And, loaded uh, bases for him to save yeah. a uh, Nola out of that inning was. They had that clip, obviously, oh. if you follow social media. That was a good throw to get him yeah, out. Yeah, that was good, yeah. That was very good. And Stubbs covered base well that it didn't look shady. Like, it looked like he had no way of tagging no matter how late the ball was crossing. So that was good. That was good. There's been a lot of good – there was a lot of sharp defense last night's game with Bohm stepping up as well as Stott. Stott had been hot um, getting them pop-ups that have been coming out of nowhere, and he just snags it between second and mm-hmm. first. So – there's a yeah. lot of good defense stuff that we can talk I about mean, now. And Rojas has been Rojas been has been amazing good in the outfield. Center fielder, yeah. Yeah, even center Merrifield fielder, yeah. and Merrifield been pretty decent out there, even though you know Merrifield's probably not going to be a factor, but he's been helping where he could. Um, and our boy Sosa, <laughs> Sosa have been showing out. Sosa yeah. been helping a lot of them get in and and home runs. He had a what a three run homer I think a couple games back. Yeah, um, Casty been Castellano's been getting that. I mean, his, yeah, it his, wasn't him last night. We won, yeah, I mean, we they wouldn't have run. won one game because he brought them back in extra innings. And I, I never have faith when they get in extra innings when I feel like they should win in the ninth. So I always flick. And thank God the U.S. and the international U.S. women's soccer league was on somewhat a channel because I was getting stressed. I was like, I can't do this. I hate when they go into extra innings at night. So I went right to watch Sophia Smith get a second goal. And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> so they got a new, then they have a. I have a new, new coach this year, don't they? Yeah. The other person retired, yeah. right? Yeah, she's from uh, the England team, and now she's their new coach because they got rid of that guy because he wasn't doing nothing for him. But, but yeah, Sophia to see, who I call Chipmunk, who reminds me of my niece uh, Kiara because she has that total Chipmunk face like Kiara. It's all cheruby and cute, but then like mm-hmm. lethal when she gets. She got a a goal that I don't even know how he and her feet could even stay in bounds to make it in just at the right time to cut it while it was raining. She hit that corner kick, and I was like, "This girl is ridiculous, like it's ridiculous." Crazy. It's crazy some of the stuff they can do with that ball. Like it's just in time, yeah. I mean, instincts. You gotta the fact that you know you are this close to stepping out of bounds, and that could have been a. And she almost got a second one actually quickly right after. She's quick with it for a. Well, it doesn't matter if they step out. I mean, it's just the ball. No, it doesn't. But I'm just yeah, saying, like she was, she was able to keep herself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah at the right corner for it to not even have to bounce to get in. Like it just was like a hair in. And she and how they, in. Yeah. And how they bend it. How they bend it is insane. Bended it. Bended it. Yeah. Up. <laughs> but uh yeah, so I had to divert myself. But once I came back and found that uh Cassie was the reason for them to win two one. That was that was a good win. Um Cassie yeah. has his down moments as we know. Um but when he comes back it's like almost and he doesn't swing any different. That's what cracks me up. He can have the same sleepy follow through and hit a two run home I mean, run that saves the day. So, he's so long, so it's so, like, he's like and he's tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he has yeah. such a long swing, and like, um, but a good thing is, look, they're getting production out of one through nine. Like everybody, everybody, whoever's them, like they get production out of them. One night, somebody different, but yep. I mean, that's how that's how good teams win. You like, you don't have to worry. The lineup is like, okay, well, it doesn't matter who's in the lineup. We're gonna get production out of somebody. And it means more now because that seemed to be the only factor that was slowing them down last year. And I think that's why it's easy to have hope in a game like where they could win in regulation to think that they Mm -hmm. can still make that be a W. And when they don't is the only time I'm like, all right, they probably tired because this season's been, you know, this series been going on. But I, let's just talk about the Pitching. fact they've had so many sweeps in series oh, yeah. already. And it's not even halfway through. Yeah, it's crazy. They've and been pitching. owning the pitching yeah. has been lights out too. I'm like, lights out. They've only so, uh, dropped one series in the last like couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, so that's saying a lot. We need to get rid of Tyrone. Wall. I'm tired of Ty- John Walker. Though. Yeah, um, now we're gonna have to do the obvious and admit that that Walker ain't working. Uh, but the thing is, we're no. stuck with him though. Because we're stuck with him. Like, yeah, it's always the case. You can never really have a perfect. I mean, there is no perfect roster, but there's always like one pitcher. You're just like, can you just so we got four we got four solid starters and like, yeah. it's looking good. So because yeah. it's better than the case we were in before and we had only the rock and three and like three start solid starters and everyone else is like by committee. Like when we'd have to try and get along a, a bullpen game going, which I don't like when they have no. to do that. Oh, that's that's a horrible game. That's a game that but, you hate to watch, but it's necessary. But in the playoffs, you only need four four starters, so 
We'll be and okay. You say three last year, but technically I felt like that it was two because Nola was starting to get on my nerves last season. No, but the thing is, you say getting on your nerves, but he still had his solid, his numbers were still solid though. I, know. Uh, I don't care what anybody he's gonna says. Fight like, me to this day. I'll be like, no, no. But the thing is, you gotta look at his numbers, though. Yeah, he had, he may, he does check out certain he games. Does. But for the most part, he had solid numbers. He still, he still did okay, and he looks great this year too. I'm just like, yeah, I mean, he's got. So I mean, uh, hey, as long as they just keep it up, just keep it up, uh, yeah. just keep cruising, keep it light, keep having fun, cruise it, like just. Don't don't get too stuck in your head and like just keep playing it, keep playing their game. If they just keep playing their game, they'll be okay. Yeah. And hopefully. I feel like so. one of those things with Nola that is more consistent is that I think that he's not getting tired early every series now as much as he used to. He used to have this like you just know he's not gonna get through the third or the fourth. Now it's mm-hmm. like it's not until about the sixth that most pitchers that you start going. Like even Wheeler didn't have his good stuff the other night, but he's still I yeah. mean, he still managed to like take care of business for the most part. I mean, even when he, wasn't doing, he was off a lot. So we're not at the halfway point yet. So oh, getting there. That's what's scary. Because it's uh, they've played. Let's see, fifty-four. They played sixty-eight games so far. Mm-mm. So they're not at the halfway point yet, and these guys start. You know, the stamina gets up. The pitchers get stretched out more. They can throw a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, but, like I said, it's watchable. It's a watchable. Every series gives you a surprise from everybody on the roster consistently. But I'm okay, I, yeah, I'm okay with them not. If the pitchers can – if they can give us seven solid, eight if needed, but I'm okay with seven solid innings because the Hoffman and Alvarado have been doing a great job, like knocking it down. The Hoffman after. did good last night. Yeah, he helped them a lot. Even if he's off a little bit, his, his off is still decent. Kirkin look Kirkin's starting to look better too. Like I've been like Orion since the playoffs, so you can't say nothing wrong to me about I, it. I didn't I didn't like I didn't I don't think he was ready two years ago when he when they tried to when they tried to have him come in and oh, pitch no. the game. No, but I think he, he didn't was, do I think he, he it's good well. to know that he's coming up is yeah. my point. Oh, he looks, looks way better this year. Like he's way better. He's got great command. He's like mm-hmm. it's good. Like he's I just didn't like how he looked because last year he was like giving up runs and like I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you go, you took your kid, you just bought him up and said, okay, you're gonna put you in the playoffs. Now. That's my point. Like, like, so, what did, what would you really expect for someone who was thrown into that position? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he could have been you know a lot what? He worse. deserved he deserved the shot because he was running through everybody down no, in, he, he in, was. In, in the minors. Like nobody can hit him in the minors at all. So you gotta give you gotta give the kid like that a shot. And that's how and that's how I felt it was fair. I felt and I, I think it's paying off. Awesome. It's yeah. paying off now, so it's good. Yeah, and I, I you know me, I like saying his name because I always think every time I hear Orion, I think of that song from the the Batman soundtrack, no. <laughs> the, arms, the Arms of Orion, that ballad with the uh, <laughs> Prince and Sheila E. Every time I see his no. name, I'm like, it's not like you see Orion everywhere, you know, other than Omarion, this R and B singer. But Orion is a whole nother thing. But no, I like giving. There are some people that you can tell are going to not be as much as a liability, even in their early stages. Like, like we all kind of saw it in Hoffman right away. That's why I wasn't shocked that he kind of came became that bridge to the closer, if not the closer. Mm-hmm. Um, Alvarado's even getting a little bit more control of his um his left because he is a powerful left uh pitch. Yeah. That looks like he might break somebody's hand one day. <laughs> Oh yeah, that thing hits you. That's gonna hurt. That thing's almost 100 miles an hour too. Hey. Oh my gosh! I know at one point, I know um, either JT or, or Stubby was like, "Yo, <laughs> chill." <Right. laughs> like, I could have sworn one time, but one of them was like, "All right, give me a minute. Give me a minute." Um, but yeah, and to see, like I said, the the improvement of Stott's uh, defense. Yeah. Now we just need to get some obviously consistent offense. But defense really was missing a lot last season. So this is one mm-hmm. area that they've clearly as a team have oh, stepped up. Definitely so improved much. on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. That's what yeah. And even when even when Bryce has his rocky nights, it's like, you know he's gonna come back and hit a bomb somewhere, if not a two run homer. So I, again, we never worry about Bryce. I, I do agree with what Ricky Batalico said today on uh, Best Show Ever that, you know, seems to be the formula is he has a baby, he comes back and has dad strength. <laughs> so now, yeah. he, he which I feel bad kids. for the wifey because if they win he, the series, she's like, oh, crap, he's going to be looking at me again. Like, it's time. <laughs> time to deliver. 
sitting there curled on these kids like yeah. <laughs> she's gonna be like you don't have to hold this sir <laughs> you know but i i do agree that he does um no, you can afford it buy a nanny <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying like he's wait he's 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 doing it very well like I'm sure he can find a nanny service but it's like well you're not doing nothing so you know <laughs> he's a good dude though did you see what he did for that young kid yeah for the proper that, that was awesome because yeah you heard the story he was the kid was like hey yeah uh you should help me uh ask the girl to the prom he was like okay and I know like, just like that I was like wait and, what <laughs> and he was like uh yeah uh, well we'll set up something he's like you know what let's just do it now he's like, I'll follow you you can drive to her house I'll follow you in the car in my car i was like damn see that that's awesome like that that shows like he because he, he could have totally been like well i got he you know. cares about the fans that's cool right, right, yeah. right. and that's and that's one thing i know that some well that's a whole side story but i know that people have always felt like he's only really kind of like really contributed to fans on certain bases and i'm just like he didn't have and to those, do that and those kids will never forget they will never forget that like no. that, that, no. that that's a great that's gonna be a great memory for them that guy got bragging rights for the rest of his year like he can say oh remember that time oh remember yeah that time <laughs> mm-hmm. so hopefully him and the girls stay together because if she breaks up with him i'll be like just remember i got bryce to yeah. propose i to. got bryce to, and get I mean, you to go the prom proposal. yeah <laughs> not bryce to propose that'd be wrong um but anyway so so bottom line you said they were 40 and what what's the record now 40 uh, 44 and 19 44 and 19 so they're the yeah. best in baseball right now it's um, uh tied with the yankees actually Tied with the Yankees, and you said eight games ahead of the Braves, so that's good. Eight, eight, yep, eight and a half. I think, yeah, no, eight solid, yeah. Eight, eight solid. solid. Yeah. The point is, we didn't expect them to be this good this soon, but we're glad because it's not even, like you said, halfway through, so this is obviously very encouraging, um, mm-hmm. especially when they start playing more interleague, um, like when they get to the Dodgers, and, you know, that'll be – I mean, you know, we always go, and we said this last pod, that it's very easy for some people to say, like, well, they haven't really played anybody – it's a consistency for me. I don't even care who they play. I mean, they've been beating good teams. They, the Brewers are not slouches. The Cardinals aren't slouches either. The Giants all. aren't slouches. No, <laughs> not at all. At least so, I mean, they've been that showing up. Yeah. They've been showing up against good teams. So Yeah, so I feel I mean, I'm not worried about – because you also have to depend – you have to depend – it depends on, too, on what – where the space that team that they're playing is is in by then. You don't know if mm-hmm. they're going to have injuries that – may not make them the force that they're supposed to be, or any of these major teams can have off nights. So if the Phillies get them on an off night, what does it matter who they play? Yeah. Um, as long as they're focused. Some teams have your card too. Like the Rockies have our card sometimes. I don't know oh how. God, yes. But, yes. Colorado but is do, kind of, yeah. They just do for some reason. Sometimes, I don't know what it is. You know, right. the Mets had our had their number for the longest time. So for, the, for us to be able to easily get on the Mets now without it not even being a thought. Because for a while, we kept not understanding how are they well, losing to the Mets? On well, we know how the Mets fall apart anyway. So. They do, but for a while, it was like, you know, when they were going through their struggle bus season with these coaches, I mean, these managers, it was like, I don't know how you're losing to the Mets, yeah. to the Mets at all. But like I was, I was having a conversation with someone about the Mets, and they were just like, they were so sure that the Mets were going to do whatever, and they were so confident. I was like, no. No, they're not. I was like, right. just, I was like, you'll see. And I was like, and then the Phils that year, and the, and the Phils actually, yeah, they went to the World Series that year. And I was like, see, I told you. Mm-hmm. Like, I told you. Like, well, Mets like to fall apart. We were, we were, we were saying that uh, the Mets were starting to fall apart, and now the Braves are having major injuries with losing Acuna. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is a major uh, loss for them as far as oh, the yeah. roster. I think somebody else just got injured too on their team. So they're going through a lot of roster changes. Um, which obviously will help the Phillies in the long run. But like you said, no team is really uh, – they should be afraid of or worried about. Like you said, some series are just going to be bad because – It's going to struggle, yeah. Fatigue, they're going to struggle. <clears throat> like the know. Marlins. No matter how bad the Marlins play, sometimes they play us well. Yeah, they do. I don't know why they hit us well. They hit, they And they're not – they're getting better for them, but they're not ever going to be better than <laughs> the Phillies. Like for them, they kind of look better, but I don't think yeah. – really, they're not intimidating. Um, no. But no, I, I think that it's very exciting now to see what they're like. And they don't even have Trey back. So the main thing with not even having Trey back was the issue of whether or what they were going to send Pache down or they were going to send, uh, what's his name? Uh, He's on medical leave right now because of his back, uh, Clemens. Yeah, they got a couple people. Yeah, I mean, they just called up a couple guys. What, Dahl and... Uh, yeah, David Dahl, yep. 
He shot the other guy. And the dog the came in and had a great game. Had a great game, hit a home run right away, and you know, so he felt Cody right Clemens, he, yeah, Cody Clemens wanted to hurt his back. Cody yeah, yeah he's but. the one who had back spasms. So a lot of people were like, Well, what happens if tra-? someone just called in actually before the show, uh 975 show ended, and they said that they I don't even care if Trey comes back. And I'm thinking to myself, first of all, y'all got him too much money. It's not an issue of when he really comes don't back. don't care if he comes back. back. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's not even an issue. Like, we can say everything's great the way it is now, but pause. Because we know, like, a month from now. We were totally winning with different. him, too. So, I mean, right. Right. I don't understand what the whole big deal is. If you're like, oh, we don't want him back. We're, we're winning when he was there, too. So... He's an extra bat that they need, especially if Trey gets, uh, when he gets hot and gets into his timing again. Like, you don't realize, like, any time off, conditioning wise, he's probably mm-hmm. not going to be sharp hundred percent. But oh, it takes some time to. But get he's, he's again. the king of you know follow through. So at some point, he's going to connect again, and then you're going to be like, "Well, I miss Trey." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Phillies paid him too much money for you to not to miss Trey. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you know, Bryce was a big you know proponent of why he's here. So there's no, there's not even a question. Uh, the fact that even someone said that today, I was just like, "See, y'all get so content and don't realize that some of these players are just fill-ins for the guys that are hurt. Like none of these people will be here, you know, mm-hmm. come Red October. So let's just stop." You yeah, know. when they have to hit the playoff roster together, I mean, you don't know who's going to stay up. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the guys we love now that just joined or came up because of what the circumstances are, you have to, you can't, you ha- you have to unlove them quickly because they're not going to stay. You yeah. know, Pache can have a good string or defense plays, or, but he's not going to be on the starting roster when it comes playoff time. But if they need him, they'll, they know that he's reliable. Mm-hmm. That's about it. David Dahl, too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm just excited for them. And uh, now switching gears as we celebrate our lovely, our lovely Phillies about to go overseas and make USA look really, really good. We're going to talk about our Eagles who are going to Brazil, which may or may not already have a kink in it. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, I haven't really been on anything today. To look, okay, so that's I'm, good. I, so that's good. To work, so yeah, so I can give you. A, you can give me a genuine. This is why sometimes I'm glad you're not on social media like me because if there's something that I've heard, and I would be like, "Oh, Eddie's gonna be like, what?" So the news is because the Packers and and Eagles both wear green jerseys, they can't mm-hmm. go to Brazil wearing green because they're it's a gang related association. Hmm. I heard about that part. Yeah, but I wasn't sure what they were gonna do about it. This is my point, though. Y'all knew about this when y'all assigned the teams. Y'all tell me someone didn't do no research about gang yeah, and both colors teams and stuff fans in Brazil. Green, like, and come on. <laughs> I mean, the Packers' main thing is green. Like, they could maybe do yellow and white and like a little bit of green. But my point is, what are the Eagles doing? White or black? And then if they're the home team, they're not doing white, so they have to be the black jerseys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna have to. Yeah, because midnight green is still green. Unless you're technical about it, and they definitely can't do Kelly. I don't think the yeah. game member gonna be like, "Oh wait, no, that's Kelly Green." You that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> but here's the thing that irks me. I'm, it's starting to irk me more and more about when they do these overseas deals. Mm. They could have been more prepped for other countries before Brazil became a thought. So you're telling me you rushed this decision to have like a new country be, you know, the NFL overseas program, but y'all didn't do all y'all research on mm-hmm. things and an underbelly culture that they're going to have to be around when they do warm-ups and everything like you don't know what kind of situations they're going to deal with at the hotel do you know what i'm saying yeah. like if they decide to go out and eat and have a team dinner you didn't talk about this mm-hmm. stuff ahead of time or are we just now as fans learning that oh by mm-hmm. the way they well, you don't know they're gonna wear green yeah, you know they're going to have crazy security when they go around. So. Let me just tell you, Dom, Dom is going to have, there's going to have to be 20 Doms, okay? Well, it won't even be Dom. They'll probably have an outside, uh, yeah. they're going to have to have like, I'm talk- and I'm talking armed security. Like, like a I'm, local, yeah, they're going to have to have yeah. a, someone who's Not local. even a local, like even if somebody bought somebody with them, like it's going to have like to a be company. an armed security thing. Yeah, like, like somebody the league is gonna have The league's going to have to do something about that if that's the case. That just ir- irked me and embarrassed me for Roger Goodell because I'm going to be like, y'all look really unprepared now. And the last time when they did that Mexico game, remember that stadium wasn't even ready that year and they had to take it like- Oh, that field was game. so bad. The field was in bad shape. It was so, horrible. 
it makes you wonder like, okay, what is more important? Y'all trying to get these deals signed or mm-hmm. y'all actually thinking about the safety of the players and the research that you do about these countries? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's looking real obvious now that y'all in for this money grab and y'all ain't thinking about all the particulars and the safety of the players. We already know they don't care about the safety of the players in a way because they're trying to push this 18 game crap. But now you're trying want, to put people want, in places they shouldn't be in that money. they wear. <laughs> trying to get that money. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, what would your first thought be? Because you know some guys on the team already probably like Brazil for our first home game. <laughs> yeah. And but, why is it going to be our – and it sucks that it's like one of the home games because then that takes away from, you know, one of the fans, games from Fans here. are livid. The, the local fans are pissed, even though some of them are going to break the probably their mortgage deal to go to this damn game. Yeah, I don't but, think it's worth it. <laughs> no. I mean, I it wanted to too, go in my in my hindsight, obviously, for a travel opportunity, but it's then too fucking hot and <laughs> hot. And then someone told me it's just not very clean in certain parts of Brazil and safe. So I look at it. That's totally against when I used to work at the link about their whole motive of clean, safe, and friendly. <laughs> well, let me make sure you remember about the country. It's going back to when they did the whole um, the Olympics was in Rio. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, that was the oh. whole. That was a whole the stories, thing. yeah. The stories players of how they getting, slept, players, the cots. players getting sick, like yeah, the cots, athletes getting sick, and like all this other stuff, like the, the betting situations, heat what advisories. Was that, was that Brazil? Yeah, that was Brazil. Yeah, yeah, it was heat advisories for the soccer games because they were like, wow, it's like a hundred something degrees. Down. People probably dropping at at a practice time, like they ain't gonna make it to games. <laughs> I know, right? Like I'm dehydrated, dehydrated <laughs> already. Like, and I'm yeah. sure they're loving the fact they're in Paris instead of uh, Rio. But yeah, yeah, I heard that today just before like the end of uh, like dr- like around drive time time, and I said to myself, who messed up on the scout team? Like somebody whose job this was for a year out was supposed mm-hmm. to have clarified this because they, if somebody's coming up with a new jersey or they both gonna be wearing white. <laughs> talking about Yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to think what we were last yeah, so, talking about the birds and how like um that was about that the year is coming and about the problem about the games and hopefully, you know <laughs> And he's like, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, no, we were talking about the prime time stuff, and then yeah, we were we were talking about the yeah. slots. Yeah, okay. So yeah. we'll just let's finish it from there. Bottom line is, okay, I'm gonna start now. Bottom line is from from the beginning of uh, training camp until preseason, it's gonna be very interesting to see how the rookies look. I'm excited to see what Cooper Dijon fits as a safety. I'm excited mm-hmm. about Quinion. I'm excited about. First of all, I want to say I'm sorry to James Bradbury, but your job is done. <laughs> No, they've been he was already injured him. twice. They've been moving him around though, actually. But he was injured already. That's why I'm like, Ooh, baby, you ain't gonna be playing until probably training camp at the most if you get See what happens. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I feel like they're gonna finally. Like, they're gonna let him play, but I have a feeling they're gonna find a shady way to start dropping his reps because I think he's done personally. That's just me. Yeah. Anyway, but um, tell me uh what what your thoughts are so far. If you've seen any OTA action, are you excited for training camp? And then we'll wrap it up. I mean, yeah, I am because um, I'm curious to see how these these little battles are going to take place. We got a lot of you got a lot of DBs on uh, on on the roster right now, and we've got a lot of wideouts on the roster. So trying mm-hmm. to cement, so trying to cement who's going to be a number three guy. Yeah, three or four. So we don't know. Cause what's that? What's that guy? Oh, he's I keep getting him. Uh, the Shipley about, kid is a running back, right? Not a wide receiver. Yeah, you talking about? Uh, you talking about uh, John Ross? Yes. Yeah. The, he's so, the vet, and then there's also Paris Campbell. So yeah, that third. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. interesting. I think they're gonna have. Hey, I, I I like this whole having too much, too many toys to play with right now. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> and I think yeah. that's a great thing. So. No. It's a it's a good like they say it's a good problem to have and we know how injuries sometimes happen and if you yeah. have too many people that means those guys won't be standing around for long um, when worse comes to worse I just know right now this whole thing with the Brazil game all eyes on if there's some dramatic change to either the uniform and or I don't know how they're gonna do this whole setup well, they're gonna have to probably go white and black. I mean, yeah, we wear a black jersey. They wear the white and call it a day. Yeah, I'm fine with the black. 
Especially because it's Friday night. I feel like that's a nice, sexy jersey to start with. Isn't that the to wear like black? Uh, isn't that just the wear? We should wear the black pants. Yeah, they could just or, do all or, black because they they allow them to do the black helmet, right? So now they can do all black on black on black. Well, I don't know if they'll have the black helmet because of. I thought they let it. The, I thought they let them do the, that now. Well, yeah. Well, they had the second helmet, which was the Kelly Green helmet. So. I don't know if they're they they may they probably can though so they have, have to, to now yeah but it's like because this is the yeah. circumstance where they're gonna have to make an exception <laughs> yeah because they ain't so trying to get shot to... <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> my, look you should have saw my ignorant tweet before we started recording i said y'all trying to get my team shot up before the game <laughs> y'all didn't know about the green are you telling me mr goodell mr 18 week season <laughs> you'll be splashing up gang symbols and shit <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, be crit words walk. <laughs> oh, fucking be crit walking in the end zone. <laughs> Watch them play not like us as the intro is gonna be real ignorant. <laughs> yeah. they should do it. I'm sorry. You know everyone's happen. gonna scream racism. Oh, they gotta play not like us because it's Brazil and they thugs. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> you know the Rams gonna cry racism. Anyway. All right, but enough of that. I just thought that that was a good way to end the pod. But yeah. the next next pod, once we get pe- past London, tonight is obviously the NBA playoffs. We don't really care, but I'm going to say Mavs and five. Uh-huh. Do you have a thought? Um, I think it's going to go to six. Oh. Okay. I think it's going to go to six. Right. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good series. I don't think anybody's going to dominate, but I think they're going to beat each other up. That's what I see happening. <laughs> Because I mean, it's both Luka's teams, a bad boy, so and both teams are loaded, so we'll see what happens. Luca's uh, a bad boy, and I will say it till I die. As much as I can't stand Kyrie, he's got the best handles in the game, and <laughs> just like what's Jabari? Was it not what's his name? They just said he said, "How do you stop uh, Kyrie?" And he said, "Just pray." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, two of them putting up sixty points together. I mean, that's Drew, just... that's what it is. Yeah, Drew. <laughs> that was funny. All right, Ed. So, Birds of a Feather, we back, baby. Um, hopefully, oh, yeah. we're talking. Uh, we want to definitely talk more Eagles. If something develops between this whole, because I'm so into this this whole Brazil mess, I, uh, things are going to be changing between now and then because they they have to realize somewhere they done effed up. <laughs> and nobody wants to admit it because they act like, oh, we didn't do anything wrong. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Yeah. But all right, uh, from your girl, AJ, the Suburban Princess, that's Mr. Eddie B there. The Code Edition Later. will return after these messages next week, if not a week from now, but we'll be back and we'll talk about no. sports. And we also got the, uh, we got the softball game coming up soon too. So yes. And weeks. we will yeah. be, thank you for reminding me. Yes. Uh, the celebrity softball game in Allentown, courtesy of slim Reaper himself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who just got his deal. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing him play and hit some bowels out the field. So it'll be a fun summer looking forward to it. All right, Birds of a Feather, Coed Edition, we out. Fly, out. fly. Fly, you will fly. Later. See y'all later. <laughs>